everyone. Today we are going to drive this gorgeous McLaren 720S Spider. This car is painted in this incredible color, which is called Lantana Blue. Not sure why McLaren called it that, but it's definitely this deep metallic purple. Fortunately, there's no sunlight right now or direct sunlight, but it has this incredible metallic flake to it. And overall, the car is just absolutely gorgeous, pretty much from every angle. Scoot around here, get the front. Just an alien looking vehicle, in my humble opinion. The stance on this car, how it presents itself, is just remarkable. And the aero and everything on it is crazy. looking at the wheels here. So we have uh, Pirelli P0s on the front and back, 245, 35 with 19 inch rims in the front and a little bit larger in the back. Of course, the McLaren carbon ceramic brakes, which are fantastic. You can stop on a dime. The incredible arrow in the back here and on the Spider model, which is so interesting, is how the support beams look. And actually you have this glass, which I'm not sure if it's structurally strong, but it looks fantastic. Souping around to the back here, see the back profile. Of course the air brake, inspired by the P1. This particular model has the MSO carbon package which gives us the rear carbon uh, engine bonnet, as well as the carbon mirrors, carbon front air intakes, carbon headlight housing, as well as the side uh, intakes in carbon. And this particular model as well has this gorgeous kind of yellow um, front diffuser, uh, yellow highlight here in the front, as well as in the back. And that's also matched within the interior. Awesome spec here. You got the smooth carbon steering wheel with the paddle shifters, carbon by the infotainment system, and of course those yellow highlights everywhere, the yellow stitching. Zoom back out here, show you the side profile with the door up. Overall, just a gorgeous looking vehicle. Quite the upgrade from the 570 and of course the 650S, its predecessor. This car really is a hypercar in a super supercar high production body. Today we are going to jump in, drive it, give you a POV 3D audio experience while doing that. So let's do it. Getting in and out of this car, not incredibly difficult. Not as easy as the coupe though. It's got awesome animation popping up. Seven hundred ten horsepower V eight twin turbo, zero to sixty in roughly two point seven seconds. It is ludicrously fast, incredibly fun to drive. We'll start off here in comfort mode. You select your modes here on the right next to the seven inch touch display, which is fine for what it is. No Apple CarPlay or Android Audio, unfortunately. Now, they call this the hypercar killer or the P1 killer because the specs on paper 
illustrate that. I mean, 700 horsepower, it does zero to 60 in 2.8 seconds. You can take it on the track, have an absolute blast of a time, or you could just drive to dinner with your wife. And everyone will stare at you and be jealous of the alien looking aerodynamics, the beautiful colors of these cars, the incredible angles, all the carbon fiber, all of that is really put together in this vehicle. And McLaren really has iterated well on this segment. We can make this light and we're gonna jump right into active mode and manual. Understanding of the hypercar, the P1, you know, now the Senna, of course, uh, and the Speedtail, turn that into a vehicle that is easy enough to drive every day, but fast enough where you can basically burn anyone off the line if you happen to get into a street race. I just kicked it in the manual. To do that, you're gonna press this button right here. You have um, the handling and the powertrain. So two separate parameters that you can configure. Comfort, sport, track for each. Comfort was the mode we started in. You know, definitely a smooth ride for, for what the car is. Uh, smoother than a GT3, for example. Probably not as smooth as Fer uh, like a Ferrari California. Uh, Portofino rather um, or an SF90 but as soon as you get the car into the sport mode and you are in manual at the same time um, it's definitely a vehicle that has the dark side of it come out features about this car it has auto start stop in my opinion probably one of the most useless features in a car like this it gets a combined roughly 18 miles per gallon probably 22 on the highway 15 or 16 in the city but it's not why you're buying this car and I'm not sure why McLaren decided to include the auto start stop because it's fairly annoying it does work pretty well, although you have probably a two, two and a half second delay uh, before the engine comes back on if you're, let's say you're at a stop sign or a stoplight. And it's always on, even if you're in active and sport, it's still gonna turn on uh, despite, despite you really not wanting that to happen. I'll show you around the infotainment system. It really just has Bluetooth audio and navigation on this seven inch touchscreen. Really not the best, in my opinion. The speaker system, which is a Bowers and Wilkins, um, is one of the worst I've probably heard within this product segment, within within this car segment. I mean, if you look at some of the other cars, you know, a 488 or an F8, uh, or even the Huracan, it's gonna have better audio, better quality of sound. But that's not why you buy this car. I do think it is pretty fascinating that McLaren decided to actually build this car and put the amount of power that they did into it because it really does compete with a P1. And in terms of speed, zero to 60, in terms of uh, how quick it goes, around the track. We'll 
be doing a, a launch control test as soon as the tires get a little bit warmer and taking it on the highway show you its true power the infotainment screens are interesting in terms of navigating all the controls and seeing the relevant data that you want to see for example the tire pressure uh, you have to use this stock here by my left hand um, and it's not that intuitive but it does work in sport you're gonna get a little bit more aggressive shifts you'll feel that when up shifting and accelerating aggressively say this steering wheel is very comfortable easy to control the vehicle and um, I'm actually a fan of the fixed paddle shifters on the steering wheel as opposed to let's say being on the um, steering wheel connector here like Ferrari does for example um, or Lamborghini does and the reason is because when I'm driving hard, driving the car hard, I always have two hands on the wheel and typically if I want to upshift or downshift, I'll have that capability as opposed to taking my hand off the steering wheel, reaching behind and shifting or downshifting. Very smooth downshift, let's get into second. I'm typically a naturally aspirated guy. I love a V10 in a Lamborghini or a V12 in a Lamborghini. But McLaren has been able to put out so much power and drivability out of these V8 twin turbos that you see in the 570, uh, the 650S, and of course now the 720. Whenever you want the power, you can just get it. So quick. You saw back there the air brake pop up in my rear V. A feature that was borrowed from the P1. opinion I think the exhaust sounds good for what it is it's engineered in a way that draws emotion to the accelerator pedal but doesn't have those loud annoying fart sounds that you hear out of BMWs these days the purple which I think is just classy and annoying you heard it right there quick little pop it's about as much of the noise you'll get out of this car in this stock exhaust you'd of course fit it with some type of aftermarket exhaust but uh i don't really think it needs it you know how much more sound can you get out of the car with it being a v8 twin turbo Driving this car, I recently drove the 296 GTP. That is a V6 twin turbo, and that car has been getting a lot of flack from Ferrari owners, and I think just the automotive world these days, primarily because it's a V6. But for some reason, that car and this car, they seem aligned in a lot of ways. Even though you have you know, two less uh, valves on the engine in that in that 296 GTB. It's sort of like a mini SF90, but it's wicked fast, just like this car. But McLaren, I don't think will move towards those hybrid electric 
V6 twin turbos soon enough. They might stick with the new version of the 720, whatever that is, the, you know, the 840 or the 860, whatever they call it. That car will probably be a V8 twin turbo with hybrids that will compete with the SF90 in terms of speed and power. Um, but overall, I mean, this car is so drivable and often overlooked in the segment. But I'd love to know what you think. Should McLaren move towards those hybrid engines? Hybrid electric twin turbo charged engines? It definitely affects the exhaust uh, exhaust note, but that positive you get, of course, is much more speed, much more acceleration, right off the right off the line, which is what this car kind of lacks per se. It doesn't have that you know initial roller coaster Tesla Plaid Taycan electric push to it that you know the SF90 and the 296 GTB possess with that type of uh, combination of a twin turbo engine and an electric motor. We're gonna get this thing on the highway shortly. This car makes about 580 pounds of torque out of the engine and you certainly feel it Mash the accelerator. Let's see what handles this. Mazda and all the fun. MSRP on this vehicle is roughly about 320,000. Uh, with the options included, brand new, this car was about 350k, roughly 352,000. And what's amazing about McLaren is they probably offer the greatest customization package via MSO, McLaren Special Operations. And you're really able to customize everything you possibly want in this car. And I think the owner decided, you know, they really love this combination of uh, purple and yellow, which is why they're probably a big Lakers fan, which is probably why you have, you know, these yellow highlights throughout the car and on the front diffuser and rear diffuser. There's the start stop. So you press the brake down enough, you'll get that. And it's so quiet, it's interesting. Really, in my humble opinion, I think it's one of the most useless features though. Because yeah, you're saving this gas, but one pull on it. One, you know, zero to 100 pull, and you are right back where you started in terms of fuel economy.
there's a pop. Decent overcast day here in sunny southwest Florida. abrupt stop but you saw the air brake come up in the back it's definitely reassuring if you need to stop on the dime to get some more downforce with that active arrow What do you think? Very fast vehicle for what it is. Hypercar in a supercar body is what I really think. But it's so drivable, it's so powerful. The handling is, is incredible. Uh, and the way that the chassis is built and constructed is one that uh, reinforces McLaren's attention to detail on how they construct their chassis.
now the tires, they are properly warm. I think it's time for a launch control. think of this car love to know your thoughts do you think it really is a hypercar and a supercar body and be on the lookout for more videos from me pov videos like this want to create the best possible content if you have suggestions thoughts or if you have a car that you want to submit that you want to see driven in a pov step style or fashion like this let me know submit it down in the form below and always like and subscribe comment let me know what you think peace out guys love you so much